Order. And it's time for questions to the Minister for Regional Development. And we will start with listed questions. And could I begin by informing members that question five has been withdrawn? I call Mr. Declan McAleer. Uh, question one. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, uh, as I advised ministerial colleagues by letter on the 27th of <coughs> February 2014, work is progressing on, re on reports to inform the appropriate assessment process to address impacts on all areas with environmental designations, at special areas of conservation, special protection areas and Ramsar sites, and proposed mitigation. There are four reports in all, dealing with uh, nine different uh, environmentally sensitive sites. These reports will be the subject of a public consultation exercise expected to commence at the end of April 2014. A review of other matters considered in the environmental statement is ongoing and will lead to the publishing of an, uh, an updated environmental statement, which will also require a public consultation exercise. The draft vesting order and direction order will also be review, reviewed and published at the same time as part of this process. Uh, while I would emphasise that I cannot in any way uh, preempt the outcome of any public consultation exercise, an outline programme has been developed and the following key dates identified. Consultation in April 2014 on reports to inform the appropriate ass uh, assessments associated with water-based special areas of conservation, special protection areas and Ramsar sites. Consultation in September 2014 on the report to inform the Tully Bog Special Area of Conservation Appropriate Assessment and consultation in November 2014 on the updated environmental statement together with the updated draft direction order and draft vesting order. This may lead to the need for a further public inquiry in the spring summer of 2015. I call Mr McAleer for supplementary. Uh, I'm going to thank the Minister for his response and uh, I want to also thank him for, for answering my supplementary and his initial response. Kerr Margaret. Pleasure. <laughs> I call Mr Joe Byrne. Thank you Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the Minister for his answer. Can the Minister give an assurance that the time scale will not be so elongated that the entire project could become a victim of a comprehensive spending review and there are some genuine fears that that might happen? Can the Minister give any reassurance that he is so committed and the Department is so committed that this project will not fall by default? I am grateful to the Member for his uh, supplementary uh, and indeed uh, the Member will know that uh, the Executive uh, remains committed uh, to, to, this, um, uh, to this scheme and indeed uh, the Department continues to carry out uh, all, all necessary work. Um, I did indicate that uh, I cannot in, in any way preempt uh, the, the outcome of particularly the public consultation exercise uh, and I've indicated uh, the range of, of activities that, that, that uh, will be necessary to take place to keep the project moving. Um, the financial considerations of course uh, are um, a slightly different matter, perhaps more complex given the uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the commitment or lack of it by the Irish Government uh, and so all of these matters um, have yet to be confirmed and determined but as it stands the Department continues to work through the, uh, this scheme and to remedy uh, if you like the, uh, uh, the, uh, the areas of concern uh, that uh, Mr Justice Stevens outlined in his judgment. I call Mr Tom Elliott. Uh, thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for that update uh, so far. Could the Minister confirm if he has any money within his budget currently that could be available uh, for the A5, or is it all spent on other projects, and if he has any money at all, how much is there? <laughs> <laughs> Great, grateful to the Member uh, for his supplementary question. The, the only thing that he didn't add was that uh, have any money to spend on the Enniskillen bypass, which is presumably his, his real purpose of, of asking. The um, member will know that allocations, uh, that uh, the A5 allocations have been uh, redistributed and that we made, the executive uh, through me, have made the announcement um, on progress on both the Macrofelt bypass and indeed the A26 Frosses Road. Uh, and uh, I think it is important that um, money set aside for road projects uh, continues to be spent on road projects and particularly uh, the House will know the, the, the number uh, and range of, of projects that, that uh, 
that there is public support for and political support for, including uh, Macrofeld Bypass and indeed the A26 and other schemes, and, and no doubt through the course of this question time, other schemes will be referred to. So uh, at this point in time, uh, as I uh, explained to, um, uh, uh, to the previous member, um, uh, allocations and monies uh, allocated will be dependent on future financial uh, settlement. I call Ms. Dolores Kelly. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number two, Minister. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, after the successful legal challenge to the F5 Western Transport Corridor dueling scheme in, in April 2013, I initiated a lessons learnt review of my department's development of the F5 uh, scheme. I asked in particular for an emphasis on environmental issues and the associated legislation. The findings of the review on the F5 uh, project have resulted in, in improvements which are now applied to all major road improvement schemes. The improvements include uh, ensuring receipt of written confirmation of all con consultations with statutory bodies, including LOCKS agency, and some fine-tuning to the statutory orders and the public inquiry procedures. Uh, as those um, are aware, those who have uh, um, looked at the, uh, at the progress of this project, um, it was during the tenure of my predecessor that a screening exercise, uh, as allowed by the Habitats Directive, was carried out on behalf of the department by Michelle, uh, the consultants for the FI project. Um, I've also commissioned a review of the work of uh, Michelle. This uh, work is currently ongoing. The primary focus of this review is on the appropriate assessment and environmental statement processes. Uh, it is expected that further lessons can be learned from this exercise, which can in turn be applied to this and other major road improvement schemes. Mr. Lewis Kelly, for supplementary. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Minister, I appreciate that the mistakes occurred with your uh, predecessor, the Sinn Féin Minister, uh, Conor Murphy. But in terms of accountability, and you, you have you know, clarified some points there, but you know, who actually ultimately was responsible for the failure to deliver on the FI project? And ha would your department be given any further thought to be keeping some of those environmental assessments in-house within the executive, you know, for example, through the NIEA? I'm grateful to the member for her uh, supplementary question. Uh, and uh, I think there are issues that, that uh, members of this House and uh, more generally uh, uh, the general public uh, deserve uh, explanations for. Um, we are not at the final stage uh, of uh, both reports, either the, um, the lessons learned uh, within the department and indeed the, the, the investigation or the inquiry into the work undertaken by consultants. Uh, preliminary um, uh, uh, results, however, um, we have sought to implement um, uh, as we move forward, not only in this scheme but in other road schemes, and I think that is important. But I think uh, it is not unreasonable uh, to, to, to expect. Uh, but I have to say, a lot of it will hang on, on the original decision to proceed uh, on the basis on, on which Conor Murphy uh, 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 gave authority um, under the previous mandate. And uh, it will be interesting to see the outcome of that. I call Mr. Jimmy Spratt. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, and can I thank the Minister for his answer so far? Given the vast amount of money that has been spent in this project to date, uh, will the Minister, uh, as he did in the past in relation to the consultant's uh, investigation, call it what you will, uh, share that immediately with the committee uh, and also the early fixes that he alluded to a short time ago, would he share those as soon as possible uh, with the members of my committee? Grateful to the, uh, the Chair of the Regional Development Committee for, uh, for his uh, uh, question and indeed um, happy to, to, to share the, the, the existing um, uh, implementation uh, uh, directives and, uh, and indeed uh, w uh, upon receipt of the, uh, of the final reports, the investigative reports, uh, certainly happy to share it uh, with, with members of the Regional Development Committee and indeed more generally members of this House. Thank you. I call Mr. John Dallet. Uh, question number three. Uh, pleased to inform the member uh, that uh, planning for the London Dairy to on given dual carriageway scheme uh, will allow it to be constructed uh, in up to three parts: the Co Roundabout to the Maidown Roundabout, the Maidown Roundabout to the Dairy Creer, 
uh, and the Derry Creer Road to the Krabarki Road. Now, my pronunciation of East Londonderry and South Londonderry terms may not be absolutely accurate, given that it's uh, South Armagh. But anyway, um, this would uh, allow components of the scheme to proceed at different points in time. Um, however, progression of the, of the project will, subject to final approval of the business case, be determined by subsequent budget settlements agreed by the Department. Uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, I welcome uh, the Minister's very positive statement on the indication of flexibility. Would the Minister agree with me that 50 years is too long to wait for a bypass, as the people of Dungiven have? And would he also agree with me that the money nick stretch has now become the biggest car park in Western Europe? Well, I'm grateful uh, to, the, to the member uh, for that. I'm not sure about his latter point about uh, car park. I'm uh, reminded of what used to be said about the Dublin Road uh, leading into and out of Newry. That there were only two things you could see uh, from the moon. Uh, one of them, I think, was the Great Wall of China and the other was the lane of traffic into Newry. But, um, <laughs> That may have been replaced now by money, Nick. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, I think I said at the end of, the, of my answer uh, that it would be determined, uh, the final approval of the business case would be determined by subsequent budget settlements. I think I said by the department, but I, in fact, meant by the, uh, and agreed by the executive. Uh, I think uh, I, I'm aware of the importance of the ASIC scheme, uh, as indeed other major projects, to improve connectivity um, between uh, the principal. Uh, the two principal uh, major cities uh, within uh, Northern Ireland are two of the, the major cities, Belfast and Londonderry. Uh, and, uh, and I think for anyone who travels that uh, road uh, knows the importance uh, of uh, uh, an upgrade and how much it would be appreciated and would benefit uh, the, the, the entire region. Mr George Robinson. Uh, thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Mr Deputy Speaker, would the Minister agree there would be immediate health benefits for residents and commu commuters if a decoupled scheme were to go ahead, leading to possible long-term savings for the health department? I'm grateful. Um, it's rather a novel approach to support your, your, your health minister by uh, putting the, pushing the blame onto me, but <laughs> I am aware of that there are air quality issues uh, in respect of um, particularly Main Street Dungiven and, uh, and that general area. And we've had um, representation, strong representations, both from uh, the, the local council and indeed other um, public representatives in the area. Uh, can I say that um, in terms of um, a, 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 a habitat uh, assessment or directive, well, um, two assessments have been carried out uh, for the River Row and tributaries and the River Fahan be careful how to say that, and, and tributaries, uh, special areas of conservation. Um, construction and the operation of the dual carriageway would not by itself or in combination with other known plans or projects adversely uh, affect the integrity of the special areas of conservation or their ability to meet their conservation objectives. Um, traffic volumes through Dungiven would reduce significantly, uh, resulting in removal of the air quality management area designation. Thank the Minister for his answers uh, to up to this point. And as a long suffering resident of Dungiven, can I acknowledge uh, his, uh, his announcement here today? And as someone whose birthday actually occurs today, it makes me only slightly older than the proposals for the Dungiven bypass. Very slightly, I might add. But I'm wondering, where, can the Minister tell me when will uh, the procurement process for the various sections of the A6, the various three sections that he has outlined, when will that procurement process uh, commence? Well, I'm grateful today to, to the member for revealing aspects of his personal life and age. But um, uh, the members should know that, I, that I'm currently assessing uh, the inspector's report in, uh, in respect of, of these matters. Clearly, uh, that is a, a significant report. Uh, and carries uh, huge potential, um, uh, and, uh, and at the, at the, then at that stage we would hope to uh, identify a timescale moving forward, subject to uh, some of the recommendations uh, contained in that, and whether or not uh, we are prepared to accept and uh, implement them. Mr. Leslie Cree. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. 
Of the A6 Scheme 3 components, would the Minister agree with me that the Randallstown to Castle Dawson section would be that which would show the greatest impact on congestion in the area? I'm grateful to the, uh, to, to the member. And, and clearly, in, in terms of traffic flow, um, uh, as I've indicated uh, to, uh, in, in, in earlier answers, uh, I think the entire road between um, Belfast and Londonderry, uh, it, 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 it's been a long standing issue, it's been a long standing cause that it, that, that it should be upgraded. And clearly, the, the Randallstown section uh, is uh, a very important element of that. Um, it, um, it, it is perhaps a larger element than the Dungiven bypass element. The Dungiven amounts to about £60 uh, million. Pounds, uh, and um, uh, the uh, Castle Dawson section, uh, approximately £270 million. So, you know, there is considerable work in both schemes. Um, but again, uh, certainly Castle Dawson, that section, uh, Randallstown Castle Dawson, would significantly uh, improve the uh, connectivity between Belfast and Londonderry. But I think uh, the entire scheme would be of most major benefit. Thank you. And I call Mr. Oliver McMullen. Governor Michael, I can call you. Ever a Cather, question four. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, the Dard Reservoirs Bill is concerned with the safety of uh, reservoirs and preventing an uncontrolled release of water as a result of reservoir failure. The bill has no implications for sp uh, sporting and community organisations who lease Northern Ireland water reservoirs. McMullen, for supplement. I uh, thank the Minister for his question so far, but can the Minister guarantee? that in all cases where community organisations and charities lease reservoirs of NIW, that NIW will be the reservoir manager and take all responsibility for inspections, upkeep and maintenance of these reservoirs in accordance with the bill. Well, I'm uh, grateful to the, to the member. and I, I, I wasn't, I have to say, quite uh, clear on the point that he, uh, uh, that he raised. Obviously, NIW water own uh, reservoirs which um, no longer uh, are used as a water supply or in some cases uh, still are used as a, uh, uh, as a water supply. Um, as to them being sold off uh, to either to um, uh, or leased to other departments, um, uh, they are open for that discussion. Um, the ownership, perhaps, of, of, of outside bodies uh, is a slightly more uh, uh, delicate matter in that um, uh, what I understood the member to, uh, uh, to indicate was that, that he seemed to want um, reservoirs to be leased uh, to outside bodies and, and uh, organisations and yet NI Water to retain full responsibility for, uh, for maintenance. I'm not sure that uh, that, that is uh, a legal position that could be stood over. Um, I'm not a lawyer, uh, and I'm happy to admit that. But um, uh, but I think uh, each each application for a tra for such a transfer uh, would have to be considered on its merit, and those issues would have to go uh, be gone into in some depth before um, final agreement could be uh, arrived at. Karen McKevitt. Uh, thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And can I thank the Minister for his answers thus far? Uh, can I ask the Minister, is he satisfied that the best use um, is made of our reservoirs to promote uh, tourism um, and leisure? I'm grateful to the member for the um, supplementary uh, question. And indeed, I think it does uh, raise a point that, that um, if reservoirs are, are no longer providing uh, water supply to households, uh, then it, 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 it's probably the case that uh, they would be better off um, under different management. Um, and, uh, and I say that um, uh, in, sort of in respect of either decal um, for sporting reasons and um, for the uh, responsibilities on, uh, uh, under their remit, or indeed uh, within local government. And uh, I have no ideological hang-up on, on the transfer of, of uh, such facilities. Um, and of course, uh, happy to, to engage in, in, in some discussions, as indeed we've, we've had some discussions with at least one local authority, North Down, as to the future of uh, uh, a reservoir in that particular council area. I call Mr. Paul Given. 
Question number six. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, uh, my department is responsible for the management of the road network uh, to, provide, uh, to promote safety and efficient operation. Traffic management is an important aspect of this function, and parking management, i.e. the enforcement and car park provision, is a tool in managing traffic. I intend to uh, review the success of the transfer of off-street parking before any future decision to transfer on-street parking is taken. Get a call, Mr. Given, for supplement. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, the feedback that certainly I've been receiving, Minister, is that uh, off-street parking being devolved is a good thing, but uh, the missing link is on-street parking because you're dealing with the same issue, but you don't have the powers to deal with it in a holistic fashion. So, could, the, could I encourage the Minister uh, to take forward a review uh, in terms of transferring on-street car parking? Uh, and whilst his department is in control, uh, could he give consideration to amending the hours in which uh, people are punished uh, for parking their vehicles, which is punishing our town centres, to having it from 10 o'clock in the morning to potentially 4 o'clock, rather than during those hours when traffic is limited, but yet people are still being penalised for it? If it's about managing traffic, manage it whenever traffic is actually in place. Grateful to the member for his uh, supplementary um, question. Uh, I, I mean, I think that. Uh, People uh, are, are punished, as, as he describes, uh, when they've uh, perhaps parked uh, inconsiderately or um, uh, incorrectly, um, uh, or perhaps just um, in, in full knowledge, just without any due regard for, for the rules of parking. Um, uh, and we, uh, I will consider um, the suggestion that he makes about um, uh, adapting the times. Uh, although that, that in itself can, can cause uh, uh, some problems too. Can I say, uh, in respect of the, of, of the, of the transfer um, of the um, on-street car parking charges to coincide with uh, uh, off-street, uh, I think th there would be issues that uh, th those in, in local government would be interested in too, uh, because currently, in, in the current financial uh, service, uh, in the current financial year, uh, car parking services um, still are a uh, cost uh, the department and therefore the taxpayer something to the tune of over three million pounds. Now, um, if local government, um, through its new format, uh, is, uh, is prepared to, uh, to carry that um, added responsibility, then, uh, but I, I, I have a suspicion that they will want some supporting uh, measure from the finance minister and from the executive to offset uh, some of that. So th those are some of the, the, the more serious issues that would have to be contemplated uh, before any such transfer could be uh, initiated. Well, Mr. Sean Lynch. Could I ask the minister what would be the cost if on street uh, parking is transferred to the local councils? And has this been factored into any discussions with NILGA or the STCs? Grateful to the member, um, uh, and I hope he was listening to the, to, to the previous answer. Um, the, the generally, um, parking services in rough terms cost about um, £20 million. Uh, we take in about £17 million. Uh, this is based on, on, on the latest figures, and therefore the, uh, the shortfall is about £3 million, which is met, obviously, by my department through the executive. So um, that distributed uh, through local government uh, would represent um, a burden on uh, the ratepayers. Now, if it's the member's uh, suggestion that, that you know, he thinks that's wor worthwhile, um, I'm happy, as I've said, to, to pursue that. Uh, but my suspicion is that, that local government will want some insurance cover, uh, as it were, to, to protect themselves against uh, some of those charges. Thank you. And I call Mr. Jonathan Craig. Question number seven, Mr. Deputy Principal Speaker. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, or Deputy Principal Speaker, um, the A24 Banlinghams Road is a trunk road connecting South Down with the Greater Belfast area, which carries approximately 10,000 vehicles per day. I'm aware of the support among uh, local residents um, and road users for the introduction of safety improvements at this busy junction, known locally as Temple Cross Roads. Uh, 
The need for improvements was identified through a route improvement study carried out by my department. The study highlighted the number of collisions occurring at this location as well as the difficulties faced by motorists trying to negotiate the busy junction, particularly at big times. A number of options have been considered. The preferred option is to construct a new four-leg roundabout to provide easier and safer access to, from and across the A24 Banlehens Road, where it meets the B6 Saintfield Road. My department is continuing to progress this scheme and has recently begun discussions uh, with affected landowners uh, to agree accommodation works. Progression of the scheme through the various statutory processes, including the vesting order, direction order, intending process, tendering process, will also be required. Subject to the satisfactory completion of each of these stages, I have asked officials to bring this scheme forward as quickly as possible and confirm that I can confirm that it is currently included in my department's three-year minor works programme. Oh, Mr. Craig, for a supplement. I thank the Minister for that very comprehensive answer, and I welcome the news that this is being given priority. Um, given all the hoops we've got to jump through, though, Minister, have we any ideas as to the timescales of a possible uh, roundabout actually being put at this junction, given its serious accident history and the number of fatalities that have taken place here? I'm grateful to the member for his uh, support or his indication of support for the project. Um, I think, realistically, um, I mean, the scheme has been estimated at about three quarters of a million pounds, um, which I suppose in road service um, terms uh, is not enormous, but it is a matter of, of putting the procedures in place and, and the statutory the planning um, and, uh, and, and all of the necessary uh, stages uh, that it needs to go through. Um, I think, realistically, uh, there will also be land issues to be uh, undertaken with, with the uh, landowners. One can, uh, can never quite predict uh, timings for that. But I, I would have thought um, it would be within the next couple of financial years before uh, we could see really serious progress on it, and again, dependent on the available finance, which, of course, I know he's a close friend of the Finance Minister. Thank you. And I call Mr Jim Wells. Question number eight. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. Uh, I, uh, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, I previously met with the uh, Newry and Mourne District Council in May 2012 to discuss the possible uh, upgrade of uh, Kilkeel uh, bus station. Uh, I subsequently wrote to the Chief Executive of the Council in September that year. The location pro uh, proposed at that time, the old Mourne Hospital site, uh, was not uh, suited to such a development. Um, historically, it has proven difficult to obtain planning uh, permission for such facilities adjacent uh, to existing housing, and access to the proposed site uh, is too narrow. However, um, in recognition that the current uh, premises offer limited facilities to users, uh, TransLink continues to explore other alternatives that would provide an enhanced passenger experience. It is not ruled out uh, relocation if such a possibility should arise. However, clearly, this would be uh, subject to achieving a value for money business case and to the necessary capital funding being available. From 2008 and 9 to 2012 and 13, nearly £12 million has been invested by my department in upgrading and improving bus stations and depots. TransLink is currently prioritising uh, work on a further programme. Uh, the Building Services Upgrade Programme, which involves carrying out repairs and replacements of uh, TransLink's mechanical and electrical installations at several buildings and workshops across the network. Given uh, the available budget allocations, this work will be my department's priority going into the next financial year. However, I will avail of all opportunities to bid for additional capital to fund other bus projects, including the purchase of new buses. Order. Uh, that uh, brings us to the end of the period for oral questions, and we now move on to topical questions. And I call Mr. Raymond McCartney. Uh, I uh, can I thank you, uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister? I know today you have released a statement in relation to uh, an interactive sort of hub of travel based on the old Waterside Station in Derry. Will that become the site then for the new train station? to the uh, member for his uh, question. Uh, the member will know that uh, we have um, been uh, 
looking uh, at this issue for quite some time and the public consultation that was undertaken. Uh, and then we were keen then to look at uh, the, the, the early uh, economic appraisal uh, uh, on top of that. And I know there was some criticism and some frustration uh, up in the Londonderry area at the length of time it was taken, but I, I, I took the view it was better to come back with uh, more detail and, uh, and a more significant um, announcement. And uh, we've made that announcement, I think, today. Uh, and that is that uh, um, the old uh, waterside station uh, was far and away the most popular uh, venue for uh, the upgrade. Uh, we can accept uh, that. Um, but I think in the wider context of things and in the wider context of uh, transport uh, issues um, in the Londonderry region, uh, I, I take the view that we'd like to create and develop uh, a possible hub um, uh, as part uh, of any new project. And clearly that will involve more work and will certainly um, raise the, uh, the cost of any, of any such scheme. But I think it has the potential, given that the, you know, the increased numbers that we've seen on public transport, particularly the uh, coal rain, the London Derry rail line, which the member may know that I took action to, to, to rescue and save, um, and say that modestly. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so with all of that, um, I'd, I'd like to see an integrated transport hub developed potentially at that site. And that's, that's now what we will look to and work for. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister for his uh, answer. Indeed, I was there on the platform when you came on the Terry in the train. I think you were actually waving a green flag, appropriate, I'm not sure, but you were certainly waving a green flag. But uh, can, I, can I welcome... Uh, I mean, it's obviously, it's, it's an old railway signal thing, and I, I'm sure the Minister appreciates that. Uh, Okay. <laughs> but in relation to, I mean, this would be welcome news, and I think the Minister would be well aware of that in terms of the retention or, if you like, reusing the former railway station. Uh, can the Minister outline where or not there, uh, is there any funding or what's his intentions in relation to funding what will be seen as a very worthwhile scheme? Thank you very much. Well, I, I'm, uh, I think somewhat different to the member. I, I, I've never wrapped the green flag around me, but. Um, uh, and, but I'm, I'm conscious that uh, it was a railway signal flag that I was uh, waving. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and of course, yesterday, yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, and, and uh, we, we, we should bear in mind um, that too. Anyway, back to your question. Uh, there, there is no finance yet attached to this project, and I have to be open and honest about that. Uh, I think, but, however, that the intent is there. Uh, we've indicated now, having looked at it carefully, as to what we would propose the solution to be, uh, and therefore we will uh, bring forward uh, the scheme uh, on that basis and see um, through TransLink uh, how that can, can be developed. But I'm sure uh, it will uh, represent a positive announcement for uh, public transport users in the Londonderry area and in the North West as well. Okay, and I call Mr Chris Hazard. Can I ask the Minister to outline what the, his next steps might be in, in regards to the Belfast Transport Hub? I'm grateful to the, uh, to, to the member for his, uh, uh, his question. And, and indeed, uh, we move from one hub to another. Uh, and the Belfast uh, Transport Hub, uh, I have to say, is, is further down the line, uh, no pun intended uh, with that. Uh, and that is the, the redevelopment of the uh, GNR station uh, at uh, Great Victoria Street. I think there is huge potential there. Uh, we've had very positive discussions uh, with TransLink and indeed with uh, other departments on, uh, on this uh, as to how it can be progressed uh, and how finance could potentially be sourced. Uh, and, uh, and I think the opportunities that the Belfast Hub presents uh, would be a, a lasting legacy uh, project in terms of, uh, of uh, this uh, particular uh, department, uh, and I think it would enhance, uh, it would do so much to enhance and revitalise not only that part of Belfast, but public transport generally. And public transport, uh, let me restate, is on the up and up. Increased uh, numbers on buses and particularly trains, increased um, uh, uh, interest in other modes of transport, particularly cycling. 
uh, and uh, the cycling revolution has begun. Uh, and uh, I'm very positive about that uh, and could wax lyrical and will wax lyrical given the opportunity on it. For a supplementary. Indeed, I thank the Minister for his answer thus far. Uh, perhaps the Minister could maybe outline where he foresees the, the funding for this project coming for, indeed if it qualifies for any potential European funding. I'm grateful to the, uh, to, to the member for his supplementary question. Um, we, we, have, we are working with uh, both uh, SIB and indeed uh, the Department of Finance personnel to identify uh, means by which we can avail of uh, the, the serious money uh, that is required uh, to do this, um, so that, and that would be um, one step removed, if you like, from, from the normal conventional executive funding. Uh, uh, but I, I have no ideological uh, hang-up uh, on that. Um, I hope very much that the member on behalf of his party um, takes a similar view. I think we want to um, avail of any available funding that uh, is out there for us, be it European or be it uh, from, from Westminster under slightly different circumstances, and that's what we're working closely to, uh, to try and achieve. And I call Mr. Sean Roger. Thank you, Mr. President, Deputy Speaker, and thanks to the Minister for his answers thus far. Minister, have you any plans to fund flood resistant measures for individual properties that are prone to flooding? I'm thinking of areas like Moore and View and the Dundrum Road, Newcastle. Well, I'm grateful to uh, the, the member for his uh, uh, supplementary. Um, we, I, I, uh, I'm aware of the difficulties uh, in, in some of the states um, uh, in the South Down area, in Newcastle and, uh, and perhaps uh, in Downpatrick and, and all other areas. We're working closely with, with NI Water to identify, and as far as we can, any steps that we can take to, um, to deal uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to reduce uh, the impact of, of flooding. It is a complex situation, um, given that uh, you know, estates and houses are, are, are sometimes built in very difficult uh, places in terms of uh, uh, water tables, etc. Um, but we will continue to work um, to, to, to see where we can at least alleviate, if not particularly eradicate, the potential for flooding. Sean Rogers. Thank, thank you, Minister, and thanks to the Principal Deputy Speaker. I'm thinking particularly of individual properties, um, Minister, in terms of, um, unfortunately, when house floods, there, there can be a grant of £1,000, but I'm thinking particularly of a flood barrier, an individual flood barrier for the front and back door, or to cover the air brick, or a non-return valve for the sewerage system. Any plans on that? Uh, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, I uh, thank the member for his supplementary. I think uh, that, that does raise other issues, including uh, issues of liability uh, and uh, issues, that, um, it, 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 issues of precedent that if you do it for several properties, then other, other properties come forward, and then the issue of cost becomes uh, a very serious issue. Uh, as I've said, uh, I think we prefer to, to work to uh, alleviate and reduce the risk of flooding to uh, an estate rather than to the individual properties at this point. Okay, and I call Ms Michaela Boyle. Gormogat, Cam Colia, uh, can I ask the Minister, will the new proposed integrated um, ticketing system facilitate cross-border cross travel? Gormogat. Well, I'm grateful to the member for her uh, supplementary question and indeed uh, her party colleague uh, uh, Mr Brady um, had a question listed late in the, in the oral questions on uh, the prospect of uh, uh, integrated uh, ticketing. Uh, it is something that um, TransLink continue to, to explore the possibilities of. Uh, we expect uh, a, a report back from them uh, on the issue uh, later this year. Uh, I think uh, as we travel in other places, we can see um, forms of integrated ticketing uh, available to to customers and to travellers, uh, and I think we'd like to either replicate that or, if it's possible, to uh, improve on it even further. Boyle, for supplementary. Uh, thank you. Uh, will the new ticketing uh, mechanism, mechanism uh, facilitate other uh, providers as well um, in terms of trains and taxis? Grateful to the, uh, to the member. Um, I think uh, I uh, um, as I've indicated, we are awaiting uh, a report uh, on these issues from TransLink. 
uh, when that is available um, and we've had a, a close look at it, uh, I'll be able to, to share more information on it. But certainly I, I'm aware that that facility is available to, to uh, public transport users in other locations and if we can, um, I, I think, make it an integrated system, it would be to everyone's benefit. I call Mr Barry Michael Duff. Can I ask the Minister uh, what steps is his department taken to resolve or deal with car park shortage of spaces in OMA in the near future? It's anticipated with the work being undertaken at Drumra Avenue car park in the town. Well, I'm grateful to the member for uh, raising that, that constituency issue, which is topical to, to him and topical to OMA, uh, no doubt. But, uh, and and uh, uh, if the member uh, writes to me or provides an assembly question, then we'll provide a full answer. Michael Duff for a supplementary. Okay. Uh, thank the Minister for his interest and his commitment. Uh, but can I ask the Minister? <laughs> uh, and uh, can I ask the Minister if he would consider, if he would consider County Hall Care Park in Oma, where the Western Division of Planning Service uh, is located, that that car park uh, could be freed up, including at weekends perhaps, to help deal with the issue, the problem that is about to arise in Oma, that maybe DOE itself and, and DRD, DRD in, in, and in your case road service and the shared car park with DOE planning service, that that be freed up for people uh, car parking in the town? Well, uh, I grateful to the member for his helpful advice to uh, our, our, our road service engineers in that area. I have no doubt that they, they, they will be listening carefully to, to that advice and they will uh, uh, respond to that uh, accordingly. Thank you. And I call Mr Sean Lynch. <laughs> I call Mr Sean Lynch. Caught me asleep. Girl, my um, Question number six. No, you're in Sorry. Topical. What number? Where is it? <laughs> Sorry. Sleep. Uh, the, Mr. Speaker, and I'll have an effort at that question for you here. I have a couple of ones for you, but I'll give you one now. Uh, could the Minister detail uh, any meetings or correspondence he's had with Ulsterbus uh, regarding a proposal to provide a, a bus service to the Anthem Area Hospital? I thank the member for his, his question. Uh, even happy to thank Mr. Lynch for not remembering his. But um, again, Mr. Millen ha has provided um, a, a, a not so much a topical question as a local question, uh, and uh, um, I, I obviously uh, I don't think it's reasonable or fair um, to have expected uh, a, a response, a detailed response. I am happy to um, provide a response uh, uh, if the member wants to uh, put that question in in direct writing to me. Commissioner Ian Milne for supplement. I thank the Minister there for his, uh, for his answer thus far. And in fact, Minister, you're off the hook here because you've answered my supplementary. I say you've answered my supplementary. And we will move on. And that uh, brings an end to the list of uh, questions for the Minister. I thank you very much, Minister.